Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a very important concept in um, CSS. So this is a pretty important concept because it's pretty much going to change the way that you use selectors. Right now, we're just assuming that all of these selectors kind of work in, the sim in a similar way. We don't actually know why they're, why they exist. I mean, why is there a class and an ID selector when they both do the same thing? So that's what I'm going to be explaining in this video. And it all comes down to one concept called specificity. So specificity is pretty much talking about the overriding or rewriting of properties in CSS. And it's pretty much this concept that different selectors are more powerful than others in a sense. So for example, if you had two selectors uh, on one element, one of them said the color was blue and one of them said the color was green. The, the more powerful or the more specific selector would end up overriding the other ones and uh, applying that property to the element. So there's this really helpful article here from W3 Schools. Uh, if you need some more help on this or you don't really understand it, you can go ahead and read this. There's a lot of numbers involved like this, um, but you know, you can go ahead and read this, but I'm just going to explain it in word terms because these numbers tend to get really confusing and they end up meaning the same thing at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I think it's really helpful if we start from the ground up. So I've removed all of the styling that we um, applied in the last video. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and create an element selector. So on all H2s, I want the color to be blue or actually I'm going to make it red. So there we go. Now we know that every single H2 is red. OK, but let's just say for our about me right here, I'm going to add a class. OK, and I'm going to call this about me and I'm going to add it to my H2. Now in my in my styles here, I'm going to use the class selector and say the color is blue. So this is where we have a confliction. You can see that one selector says the color is red, but one selector says the color is blue. So what are we supposed to do about this? Which one do you think is going to prevail? I mean, you can't just have both red and blue at the same time. And you can see that blue is actually more specific. So you can see that elements or actually selectors have different powers and the more powerful they are, the more specific they are, um, the higher they are, the higher they're going to be on the scale and the higher the chance of having or applying the right um, selector or property. So what we're going to do is actually go through and talk about the different powers or specificities or sp specifics of each selector and we're going to see which one is most powerful. So right now we know that the element selectors are less powerful than the class, but there is actually two more that are, are more powerful than the class selectors. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this about me class to another H2. Now I know it's not really going to make much sense. So I'm actually just going to rename it to subtitle. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to services as well. Subtitle. There we go. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. Oh, whoops, forgot to actually change the class name on the CSS file. There we go. So now we have two blue subtitles and one red. So you can see that the class will overwrite the header or sorry, the element tag. But there are, like I said, there are still two that are more powerful. The next after the class is the ID. So I'm going to go over here to services and add an ID of services. Whoops services. All right. Now what I'm going to do is go into my CSS file and use the ID selector color green. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh now and you can see that it's right here. It's green. So now that we know the ID is going to overwrite the class and the class is going to overwrite the header. So there is still one more that is more powerful and that is called inline styling. So we don't actually know what inline styling is, but pretty much we don't need to use a CSS file to do inline styling. All we need is the element and the HTML file. So why don't I go ahead and use services here because uh, we're kind of on a roll and I want to use this again. So what I'm going to do is say style, which is the attribute. And then in here we add all of our CSS properties, no selector, nothing. So I'm going to say here, the color is steel blue. 
And we don't actually, um, Steel Blue is part of the CSS color collection. We'll explain all of those in future sections. So if I go ahead and refresh now, you can see that it is blue and it overrides the ID, the class and the header here. So pretty much there are, there's an order here that you need to take away from this video. Headers are the least specific. They kind of apply to everything and they're not that powerful. The class selector is above that and then the ID and then the inline styling or the style attribute. So if you follow this order, you will pretty much, you can predict what is going to be the outcome and which styles are going to be followed. So this is a pretty useful um, tool and in CSS and it pretty much allows you to structure your file in a way that makes sense to other people when they're reading it. But there's still one more question we need to answer. What's the difference between a class and an ID? Apart from the obvious specificity difference, we actually use classes and IDs in different situations and they're pretty simple. Classes are meant to be used multiple times. So if you have done any programming before, you'll know that a class is kind of like a blueprint. It's made so that you can create multiple objects from it. But the thing is, an ID is supposed to be only for one thing. It'll work for more than one, but the convention is you're only supposed to use an ID for one single element. So for example, let's take this file we have here. We have three subtitles and one for the about me section. In this structure, what we would do is create a subtitle class for every subtitle on the page. Then we'd apply it to it. Now the reason we're doing this is because we can have multiple H2s on this page. So we only want to apply it to the subtitles. But then for our about me here, there's only going to be one of them on this whole document, which means we're going to use the ID of about me. And then from there, we can go and apply our styles and do all of that. So that's just the main difference between classes and IDs. And now that you know how to use them, you can actually go through and apply them properly uh, in real world scenarios. So that's just a very important thing to keep in mind. You're only supposed to use IDs once and classes can be used multiple times. All right, let's move on.